Excellent. out of the sky. This is my interpretation, or at least one of them, of a Mark 12 SPR, special purpose rifle. Mod 0, Mod 1, doesn't really matter. They're just differences in components is all. I'm talking more about the SPR concept. And as long as you really understand philosophy of use, you have realistic expectations, underscore that, then I'm on board right with the SPR. Definitely. Armor. I think it has validity. It's very popular within military circles. Heck, for that matter, civilian circles, the SPR. Welcome to the Nut Fancy Tabletop Review of this version of SPR. And I'm going to discuss the concept a little bit. And I will discuss the gun specifics as I have put it together and modded it out for my own requirements. And I guess in order to do that, I have to attack the term SPR. Not attack it, but address it so it minimizes confusion. It can get confusing when you throw out the term SPR. It means different things to different people. To me, it has three basic breakouts. I guess first by definition, it is a semi-auto M16 with glass and an 18-inch barrel designed for longer range fire. Okay, for that for at least now, point in time, SPR means that to most people. At one time, I think the acronym stood for Special Purpose Receiver, which brings us to our first, I don't know, foundation of the term SPR, and that is military innovation and use of the SPR. I think this is where most, of pe most people's interest lies, is how the military developed it, and the war fighting that it's done. Five per target. The way I look at it is this. Um, I was, I'm was i a retired military officer, 20 years. I know how the military system works. They basically He's wanted an AR-15 with glass, not AR-15, an M-16 with glass. Longer barrel, more precise. And the best way to do that is to come up with an own, its own weapon designation. So it's in the system and it arrived to them in consistent fashion. That's I'm talking hit. US Navy right here. And so some bright minds came up with the idea, well let's just we'll just come up with our own our own High you right. know M16 
precision M16. We'll give it a designation, put it in the military system. We can outfit it with the components we want. Voila, the Mark 12 SPR Mod Zero was DMC born and fielded. Brains. Very popular. Standard Later on, model. the Mod yeah. 1 came out. Now, distance, I'm not an expert on all the variances and the different SPRs, and to be brutally honest, I'm not Should that super interested. However, a lot of people are, and maybe they when they put together an SPR, they're putting together a replica That's a stretch or an interpretation two, three, of that exact Mark 12. Yards. This gun is not that. Okay, it's concept slope. true, but not true to the Mark 12. That's the first thing you need to understand is that the military designation of SPR, it came about because of a need and it was fielded. And if you want an SPR like that, then rock on. Get ready to pay a lot of money because anything that mimics the actual military used SPR, or for that matter, CAC M110, very expensive, bringing us to point two. Um, when we talk about the concept of SPR, and that is popular culture. I've talked about this in some of my other reviews, and, and it plays here as well because it gets really confusing when we talk about philosophies of use, expectations, because of, I don't know, video games. I do know that there are SPRs that you can select from the weapons menu. They have maybe realistic capabilities, maybe not so realistic capabilities, but through that popular culture, Movies to a certain extent, definitely books. I mean, Marcus Luttrell wrote a book, Lone Survivor. I think he was running a Mark 12 Mod Zero. He loved it. And so it's kind of gained a lot of notoriety and popularity from popular culture. Books, movies, especially video games. The reason I'm bringing that up is because sometimes that becomes very disconnected with reality. I'm not really talking about the books, but mostly video games. So what the game gun is capable of doing what you can expect with it. Okay, so pop culture, there are some misconceptions out there on the SPR. And then finally, this is where this review is going to concentrate, and that is real world apl applications of the SPR concept. Does it have advantages over a regular AR-15? And essentially, it is an AR-15. When we talk SPR, it's semi-auto semi only. Okay, so there's an AR-15. It's going to have an 18-inch barrel on it. Okay, that's not every AR-15. There, we'll talk about that in POU. It's going to have glass on it. Ah, okay, and by the way, that 18-inch barrel gun. needs to be a precision barrel to give maximum accuracy to the 5.56, and that will lead us to, of course, philosophy of use. Now that we have those three points thrown out there, keep them in mind, on I'm going to concentrate, once again, real-world applications, and that's what you're seeing on the table and what you've been seeing in video. Does the SPR concept have validity. Do you need an SPR rifle in your inventory? Will it give you better capabilities over a 16 inch barreled 223 carbine? Um, I would say maybe, but probably not. Especially when you say, hey, do I need an SPR? No, you probably don't. Just like I said in my other AR-15 reviews, a 16 inch barreled AR-15 will do pretty much everything realistically you'll need it to. I did say I'm on board with the SPR concept, and I am. That's because you can execute a rifle like this, where I basically get no penalties for executing an 18-inch barrel when it's done like this. I'm going to show you specifics here in a second. We're talking philosophies, though. So if I can get an 18-inch barrel, no penalties, and weight, no meaningful penalties, why not? Mid-length gas system, absolutely, why not? So, probably don't need it, but if everything comes along for the ride, you might want to think about it. How much extra velocity accuracy will that two extra inches of barrel length give you? Nothing fancy. Again, I'm not the expert, however, I am a very experienced and practical user in high desert environments with very long shots. I will say it's nominal. It's not that great of a difference. You're still shooting what is Hit. essentially, in my estimation, past 300 yards, a pea shooter. Hit. <laughs> I'm talking past 300 yards. Well, 223 is hard to you hear. Know, if I go beyond that, I'm looking to upgrade to 76251. Right. If my system can take it with SAWC. If it can't, then I want an SPR. It's the next best thing. I'll run 75s or 77. 
you know, Mark 262 77 grainers out of it or something along those lines if I have them. I would say it's still, and that's my first philosophy of use, for an SPR is an all-arounder that might have some enhanced capabilities at longer ranges. Maybe you'll gain 60 feet per second if you're really lucky, depending on your powder burn with the two extra uh, inches of barrel length. All-arounder, though. I, but the way this gun is configured, as light as it is, this gun naked, I'll say it right now, I'm talking with BUIS, no glass, no mag, 6 pounds, 14 ounces. That's as light as any other AR-15 I've thrown on the table. That's pretty darn good, and that's an 18-inch SPR. What have you lost? Yeah, Nothing. And that'll take us to second philosophy of use, and that is a long-range precision rifle. Remember at the outset, I said have some realistic expectations of your weapon systems. I laid the groundwork of video gaming and stuff. Hitting with a 5.56 five, past, yards, minus I don't know, degrees. let's say 400 yards is tough when you got a windy environment. And I shoot a lot in wind, and that little bullet is thrown all over the place. It is with the 7, the 7.62 as well, but to a lesser degree, if you're really serious about bucking the wind, upgrade to 300 Winchester Mag, 338 Lapua, very expensive, very heavy, all the other discussions come into play at this point. But there is something to be said for a 77 grain Mark 262 capability. It does give you enhanced longer range capabilities. And yes, if I'm launching that bullet out in those environments, I'd rather run an SPR. But you said the differences are nominal. You're right, they are, but they're there. I'd rather take 50, 60 feet per second. I'm doing everything I can to give that little tiny 5.56 five, bullet more capabilities. And I'm all for that. Don't think it's going to be a man stopper, though, at 400 plus. I just don't think it. We have lots of failures to stop at 200 meters out there in areas of operation with the M4. Granted, that's out of a 14 and a half inch barrel. I got about You're going to get more lethality, even MOA closer dial. ranges out of the 18-inch barrel. That's a plus side, by the way, and we're talking about all-arounder. I forgot to mention that. It is a more lethal barrel, even closer ranges, the 18-incher. But getting back to long range, don't think it's going to perform on par with a 7.6251. That has not been my experience. No, I'm not the most experienced shooter out there. Far from it. I'm always learning. But that's where I'm at right now is that... You know, when I'm struggling to hear steel hits at 350 yards sometimes, at 500 yards, I can't hear them at all, then that tells me a lot about the cartridge power. Granted, those were 55s I was shooting yesterday, but pretty underpowered. So, yes, long-range capable platform. You know it. Be realistic. It's not going to solve all your problems. I kind of think of the 5.56 as a 300-yard rifle. I've said that before. 300-yard, absolutely. Once I go beyond that, i got to dope my shot. Well, I'm doing that anyhow. I mean, and marksmanship fundamentals, very critical. It's tough, though. And then once it gets there, it's not going to have a heck of a lot of power. It just isn't. It's a 2-2-3, two, two, dudes. Third philosophy of use, varmintor, hunter, rifle. Yeah, I'd rather take this gun than all those other dumb, basically 10, 11, 12-pound 2-2-3s two, two, I see on the racks there at SHOT Show. All the manufacturers come out with hunting guns. They have these big old thick varmint weight barrels on there. Hugely heavy, big fat handguards. Why wouldn't you want to just run something like this? As it's configured, this gun right here, I'm talking everything you're seeing right here. Eight pounds, seven ounces for an SPR. Now I think the Mark 12 SPRs running around nine, Nine and a half. I, I, I haven't weighed one, but I think that's what it runs. Ten pounds, something, something, fully loaded. So I think this, in terms of weight, even beats a Mark 12 Mod 1. Sans bipod, of course. This would be a better hunting option. It has all the capabilities of those really heavy barrel AR-15s. I just don't get it. I think most of that's marketing of, hey, you really need a heavy, heavy, heavy barrel. I'm talking like an inch thick barrel to shoot precisely, and that's not true. Fourth philosophy of use, I think I said it, and that is a replica. I guess I didn't say it. Nope, it's not a replica. When I say replica, I'm talking about 
going back to the Mark 12 definition, obviously this gun is not a direct interpretation of that. And I make no attempt in my own SPR in to say of doing that. A lot of guys do. I have friends that do that. They're like, yeah, I'm going to put together an SPR. I got to get me a PRI front tube on it. You know, and I'm trying to talk them out of that. Like, why do you spend all that money? Well, you know, the Navy SEALs use it. It's a really cool gun. I'm like, okay, for a second kind of cool, maybe I can understand that. But the amount of money you're going to put out to replicate a Mod 1, forget about it. You're not going to gain anything in capabilities. Well, yeah, you are. That gun's awesome. No, it isn't. See, they get convoluted in capabilities. They're they're kind of getting confused in first kind of cool, second kind of cool stuff I always talked okay, about. That That's right. philosophy of use. Leave it at that. i got to press on. All right, this is my gun, TMP gun to be more precise, special purpose rifle, innovation and design. At the heart of it lies a Sabre Defense Model 90116 SPR, and they actually called it that. Sabre Defense is gone. They went out of business. They, were got, they got in some trouble over some importing, exporting problems, components going in and out of the U.S., I hear uh, violations of the Arms e Export Control Act, uh, CEO, what was his name, Guy Savage, whatever. You know, anytime I hear that they're, they're fretting over, I don't know, AR-15 receivers coming in out of the country, I mean, please, is that the biggest fish we have to fry out there? Yeah, I, I don't know the specifics on that. All I know is at the time, they're still out there, Sabre Defense put together a really good AR-15. A good mil-spec AR-15, which this one is. How to feel. They're still out there in some locations. You can get them. <clears throat> I'm not going to sit before you on the camera here and tell you it's the best mil-spec AR-15. It has a lot of competition. Heck, they're all over the place. Daniel Defense, Colt, LWRC. It's not really. That's a piston gun. On and on the list goes. There's all kinds of great options I've talked about before on camera. But this meets right, those right, quality right, levels. Right. You want a mil-spec AR-15? Here you go. Starting with, I guess, the barrel innovation design. It has an 18-inch fluted barrel. I'm not really sure of the steel type. They said it's a vanadium alloy. I think I read somewhere it was a Mill B11595. It is chrome-lined. It's a perfect profile. It's just my shim for the gun. Perfect profile. 0.75 inches. Doesn't get insanely large under the handguard. Doesn't taper down to M4 profile. That is a perfect barrel. And as you'll see in accuracy, a very accurate barrel as well. Now we're looking at the tip of the spear here, and no, that did not come on it. That's a Battle Comp 1.0, and I love it. It's a compensator, not a flash hider. The one that came on it was this one. I'm talking the Sabre Defense SPR, and this will take us to my first modification of my SPR and and you will see a trend starting right now and that is get rid of the damn weight that's right you're not going to see any unnecessary crap on my gun a lot of guys will go outfitting their era 15s in an attempt to give them more skill it doesn't work if you don't have skill to begin with you're not going to have it after you put all that crap on your gun I've been to tactical shoots where I just laugh when I see the guy bring out his gun and all the unnecessary garbage he has on there this SPR here in TMP as you will always see on all my guns very pared down I'm a fiend for lightweight the fact this thing weighed in at six pounds 14 ounces is no mistake that's me looking at the ounces which translates into pounds starting back again with that compensator this was a proprietary compensator. They may have gotten it from somewhere. I'm talking Sabre Defense. Because this is a component AR-15. SD did not manufacture this. They may have done the barrel. I'm not sure. I bet you they farmed the receiver out. And then they just got components and they put it together. That happens all the time in the AR-15 world. And I don't care. As long as quality control's there, they're using awesome components. I have no issues with it at all. Some manufacturers will go, well, you know, they just we make everything ourselves. Okay, great. You know, Taurus does too. Last time I checked, Taurus put some garbage together. So that to me is not necessarily, you know, it's a quality firearm. This thing is heavy. 3.4 ounces. This proprietary gill muzzle, muzzle brake. And by the way, this particular gun has been in testing in TMP since 2010. I'm glad I waited on the review though because I finally tuned this sucker up into the current form you see here. And I have a lot more stuff to say about it because of that. 
This works. It's extremely loud. Everybody who shot next to me during runs in the sledgehammer drill here in the Nut and Fancy project hated me. This thing was blowing out their eardrums even with hearing protection. I pitched it. I always knew I would. So I put on a Battle Comp 1.0. That thing only weighs 1.6 ounces. Very short. This is not the 2.0 that takes a, a suppressor. I don't have a need for that. Lightweight, looks good, and it saved me almost two ounces off the very important part of the gun, the front, the muzzle. Riding under here is a low profile gas block and it's the screw type. I just, you can see it under there. I may roll in a picture so you can see what brand of model. I don't fret too much on which one I put on there. I'll look for mil spec quality, lowest cost I can find. This is a DI gun, by the way. So is the Mark 12. What does that tell you? Kind of what I said back in early 2009 that direct, direct gas impingement is not broken. It works just great. It's very accurate, in most cases, more accurate than piston varieties of AR 15s. I love DI still. Since I made that video, as years have passed, DI has made a strong comeback. Now I don't really hear too often you know, how DI sucks. Does it put all that stuff back in the back of the gun? Yeah, it does. But I, you know, clean up here, clean back here, it's still a big cleaning job. I have piston AR-15s I've shot, they all get dirty. You go full auto fire, you go suppressed, just like I said in DI versus gas impingement, I would probably go piston in that case. That takes us to the rail, talking about my version of the SPR. This is the rail that came on it. It's made by Samson, I think they call this a Star MEX rail. It's a good rail. But it's obsolete. It is. It's not that fat. I think it measures about two inches wide. Made out of 6061 T6. MSRP on this sucker alone still is $330. Has an innovation, uh, innovative clamshell design, how it locks in. It's real strong, anti rotational, uh, good rail, but it's obsolete. What do you mean, nothing fancy? This is what I mean. It's what I've been saying for two years. The rails you want on your AR-15s are just like this. User configurable. This is a Troy Alpha rail. One of my all-time favorite rails. By putting this rail on, I wrote it down, make sure I get the weights absolutely correct. I saved 6.4 ounces. This sucker right here, 18 ounces. The Alpha rail, 10.6. Awesome. That is a huge amount of weight savings with a huge increase in ergonomics. Look how slim and trim that is. Now I can define wherever I want rail. So I have a rail here. This is sitting here for a light. This does not have a Harris bipod on it like a normal Mark 12 does. But if I need it, depending on the mission, I'll just throw another rail on here. Then I'll run a Harris off it. Or if I want to run a VG, if I'm going CQB, I could put an AFG or VG right through there. Awesome. That is the rail system I want to see. Some companies get it, some don't. I mean, here's a Daniel Defense ad. They don't get it yet. They're still running those quad rails. I mean, who used rails is all the way back here. It's a good gun. I just, I don't like the rail. It's obsolete. Innovation and design. The heart of the gun is here. By the way, this is serial number. Maybe collectible now. SD's gone. XR05349. 7075 aluminum. Forged, mil spec quality, no surprises there. It's a great receiver. We'll break it open here somewhere along the review. Never have put a Magpul trigger guard on it yet. The trigger, by the way, I'm not really sure of its origin. I think it's a JP. It is a single stage match. Pulling it four, I measured it, wrote it down. Four, four and a half pounds, I think. It is an outstanding trigger. I love it. And it came that way out of box. I have the printout of the Dan Sabre Defense 9016. The gun, the heart of the gun has been unchanged. There it is right there. You kind of see the specifics. I may roll in an image as well. See when we bought it, $1,800 at Impact Guns. That's a lot of money. Yeah. I told you that. Guys, that before, you want a mil spec quality, DI, AR-15, that's generally the entry point. You can come in less around... I don't know, you can get into Colts a lot less than that. This gun came with a lot of extras, though. It had like a case, Otis cleaning kit. Too much crap, if you ask me. Too much. I'd prefer not to have it. 
So that's a receiver, 7075, no surprises there. Standard AR-15 setup. The grip it came with, I forget. I think it came with a Hogue. I've since replaced it with the one you see there, Magpul variety. Same with the stock. The stock it came with was actually a an Ace SOT mod. I think that's what the name was. And it rattled. It did not do well. So I sent it back to Sabre Defense for replacement. I said, just put me on a regular tube, dude. I'm going to run a CTR on it. They'll say, well, we'll put a CTR on. They did. This is my preferred SPR stock. But nothing fancy for SPR. I mean, shouldn't you go with a PRS or something like that? Remember, wait. Wait, wait, wait. Before you know it, your SPR is going to be weighing 10 and a half pounds. Why even do a 5.56? You might as well go 308 battle rifle then. You dig? Get a grip, man. Keep keep very focused on the mods you're putting on. On here, I think I have a Veltor. This did not come with a gun. Veltor sling plate, single point variety. The castle nut was not staked, and I don't really fret about that at all. Oh, man, you should totally have that staked. Well, I don't want it staked because I take it off occasionally. I'm making stock swaps, plate swaps back here. If it's staked, I'm just ripping things apart. I just keep it tightened. I mean, I crank that sucker down big time. Innovation and design. That's the big picture on the components. I probably forgot stuff. We'll crack it open here in a sec. I guess I forgot to say this. My BYS on this is Troy Battle Sites. Look at the clearance on this thing. Oh, dude. That bell's hitting. Actually, it's not. If you push it down, you'll see just a little bit of clearance under there. I don't know if the camera's capturing it. It's just perfect. See if I push it down like that? That's how you mount a scope, dudes. <laughs> low, low, low. By the way, that's a LaRue mount. SPR mount, aptly named. Love that mount. Very expensive. And the scope I have running on it actually is not perfect glass. It's good medium quality glass. That's a Nikon Monarch Buckmasters 4.5 to 14. It has kind of a limited field of view. Other than that, it's pretty much a good piece of scope. Doesn't have like huge adjustment dials on it, which some of you guys may want for SPR. These actually worked pretty good in shooting. Bigger would be better on the knobs. Clearer is better. They are tactile, very positive clicks. And almost more importantly, we go. very lightweight. Again, the weight, ultimate weight, a lot of that will have to do with your glass. If we talk about the Mark 12 SPR, there are a lot of variations that I take from that. I mean, most of those are running PRI CF tubes, that is carbon fiber tubes, which I think at one time, way back when, those were a good tube. I don't think so now. I think they're, they've are they been passed up by like this rail right here. Just as light, probably stronger, much less expensive, tough as nails. Yeah, I'd go with a Troy Alpha. There's some other ones out there. Then they use PRI or CAC, BOIS. Their glass is different, 3.5 to 10 Leopold, 3 by 9 by 36. And then I think, I'm not positive on this, some of them might be running a Night Force 2.5 10 NSXs. That's a great scope, not super light, and it only goes to 10 power. Still a decent scope, good, great light gathering, illuminated reticle, which I don't have on this. I will go to at least 14 power, by the way, on my SPR concept. 10 power don't cut it for me. It might for you, but in extended range shooting here in TMP, none of us prefer 10 power over something more. Well, in that advance, you can only range if you use your ballistic mill dot at you know, the highest magnification. So, how, number one, how often do you do that? I don't ever do it. I'm always lazing, just like they do in the military. They're lazing too. You know, how often do they use their mill dots? How about never? I wouldn't say never, but it's very seldom. And when they do, they're just like you and I. They're like, well, how's this work again? <laughs> Breaking out their formula sheet. Yeah, that's how it is. That's how I see it. At least a 14 power. But I don't want to go. We're talking... You know, some POU stuff here. I don't want to go more than four and a half. Four and a half is kind of cutting it because what if you have to CQB this thing? I don't want to have to do it at six power. That's way too much. Four and a half is too much, to be honest. But for the price range, everything else I got, eh, good enough. Talked about weight and size. I really love the 18 inch barrel in an AR 15. I'm not getting any weight penalty for it. Essentially, I mean, if you were to weigh this gun against the Rock River Arms, 
Elite Operator 2, which I just love. It's a half MOA, outstanding high value gun. It's the same weight, if not lighter, and it's an 18 inch barrel. The fluting does help a little bit. It's a fluted barrel. It excites me. When you get something light, it excites me. Firepower, standard AR-15 stuff, dudes. I mean, what else has to be said? I mostly ran this PMAG out of it, 20 round PMAG. That's a per perfect SPR magazine, right? You can run a, whatever you want. Any 30 round stick will work. So many great magazine options out there. I, I tend to stick with Magpul. I love Magpul magazines. 30 rounders. If you want a beta mag, go beta mag. There's some other high volume options if you need it. If your mission needs it. Reliability and durability. I would say post service, flawless. Pre service, it sucked. What? That's right. I've seen it with several mil spec AR-15 Saber Defense. I've seen it with a Larue AR-15 upper that we have in the project. All kinds of reliability problems with it, and they're bolt related. It's almost like the M16 bolt is underpowered with whatever ammo you're shooting at, so it wouldn't fully cycle. We had several of those with a Saber Defense SPR early on. We lubricated it, double checked it, nothing wrong, gas system aligned, check, check, check. Yes, all that was done. Still would not function. Now we're shooting PMC. Don't tell me PMC is underpowered. I know it is, but not to the point where it shouldn't cycle a, a quality AR-15. I don't buy that at all. Yep. Heck, you should be able to cycle Wolf there you go. out of a direct gas impingement AR-15. Yeah, that's what I say. Wolf should cycle. If it doesn't, I suddenly become less interested in that AR-15. What if Wolf was all I have? Could be. Sent the gun back to Sabre Defense. I think this was late 2010, and they had, at the, point, at the time, outstanding customer service. They sent it back, replaced the bolt completely, Sabre Defense and it SDR. functions 100%. The gas system was A-OK, -okay, no problems there. Interestingly enough, when we were out in the desert on a sledgehammer run, when it was malfunctioning, this SDSPR, I threw in a Rock River bolt and it was 100% with that. So we're like, oh, okay, it's bolt related. That's so it. reliability's been outstanding. Durability with a chrome lining on this should be excellent too. Is that perfect for a maximum precision AR-15? I don't know, debatable. I'm talking chrome lining versus no. Maybe going with a stainless barrel. And this gun was offered in stainless steel. I just went with a vanadium one. I liked it better. I didn't want to have to coat the barrel. I, I've just been real happy with the accuracy. Speaking of which, we'll start talking about it now. I'm going to take you back to, uh, I guess, 2010. That's when these targets are. Variety of ammunition. Here we go. This is Saber Defense SPR PMC. That's actually an acceptable, acceptable group with PMC ammo, which I find doesn't shoot that great out of anything. Lots of variants. It's not a super consistent ammunition. Another group there. At the time, that really sucked. That was Hunting Shack Munition 75 grain AMAX. Five him away group at 100. That blew. I didn't label that, so I forgot what it was. Long time ago. I was getting really excited about this group. I was like, whoa, man, that rocked. And then I remembered, oh, yeah, I was just sighting it in 25 yards. Never mind. Not too impressive. This is back in December 2011. Saber Defense SPR. Boy, I don't know what it is. That PMC lap, light armor piercing, shoots like crap. At least out of this gun, it was all over the place. 62 grain in general does. I just pretty much steer clear of that. There's some M855 I'm shooting. Hole, hole, hole. Not horrible. There's some lap, huge group. I think this is all the same group. No, that's a group right there. There's American Eagle. 855, light armor piercing. Not horrendous, but uh, yeah, I came away from that range day just going, wow, that ammo blows. Now we're getting more serious. Same day, actually. Fioki 77 grain, Sierra Match Kings. Pretty good group. About 1.3 MOA. Fioki 77 grain. Now we're talking. That's what the gun is capable of, and that's, I shot several groups like this. They're hard to do, though. You don't shoot a group like that just, oh, yeah, I'm just going to pop away. No, it's maximum concentration on the fundamentals, great stability. I can't do a group like that in the desert, it seems. The table's just too shaky. There's uh, AE223, Am Eagle, shot like crap. And then this was yesterday. I want to get one more group. 
we sighted in. Oh, I changed scopes, by the way. The, the scope that was on that gun back in December was actually a Vortex. All the way up to, I think, 20 power or something like that. And then I swapped it out for this one here as I got serious on the SPR console. Side in. There's PMC. Oh, my God. Oh, that's not bad. Now that's more like it. There's 55 grain PMC. It was shooting better. That's with a Troy rail and that scope. Same gun, same barrel. 77 grain Mash Kings. Fioki. Decent group. That's a sweet group right there. I like it. About 1.25 MOA. Federal, 69 grain, gold medal match. Great group. Those Fioki shooting really nice. That's basically a Mark 262 load right there. Open tip hollow point match load. 55 grain nozzlers representing ballistic tip. Those always shoot well. I'll call the gun a one MOA shooter. Should be at the price level, right? I agree. Should be actually sub MOA. I was not really able to get sub MOA easily out of the gun. In all truth, those Rock River arms shoot probably a little bit more accurately than this gun. I ain't going to lie to you guys. They do. That Rock River, dude, is just insane. Most of the Rock Rivers are. Accuracy, though, for the gun, intended SPR purpose, totally in the ballpark. I'm going to do a quick field strip before the video ends. You're up. Not to show you how to field strip. I mean, if you don't know how to field strip an AR-15, right something's wrong, dude. Left plate. Okay. Lots of information around there. I'm just going to show you the... M4 feed ramps, maybe a few other things. Get my hands dirty in the process. This is not the charging handle that came with it. I think this is retrofitted by me. It's a PRI one. There's your bolt. The staking job on the gas key is eh, not that great. I think it is a HP MPI bolt, mil spec. All the good things, it's a mil spec bolt, as far as I can gather. No issues with it. I mean, once it came back, it's fine. I've had previous discussions about all that. There's your charging handle upgraded, PRI one. Yeah, does a Mark 12 have that? I don't know. I don't really care. <laughs> I'm not trying to do a Mark 12. I'm just trying to do the best SPR concept rifle I can. M4 feed ramps right there. That's about it. That's all I'm going to show you. Oh, except the trigger. You can see the trigger inside there. It's got some dirt. Nice trigger. I have no plan to take it out. I think it's JP Enterprises. I could be wrong on that. And that's about it. I was actually thinking about putting a JP Enterprises Silent Spring in it. Guess why I bailed out of that? Take a wild guess. Wait, nothing fancy. You are correct. Wow, who said that? A plus for you, my friend. Yeah, it is heavy. I weighed it. I'm talking about pulling out the buffer, buffer spring, which weighs about five ounces, putting into JP Enterprise's silent spring in this rifle, and it would have added about five ounces to it. Yeah, that's what I said. Not interested. I'll put up with the twang. This thing is meant to be kept light, so it's va backpackable. There's a lot of money that goes into an SPR build like this, I can guarantee you. If you use a mil-spec basis rifle like I did, in this case SPR from Sabre Defense, might be a Colt with you. You put on your handrail, your glass, and again, this is mid-priced glass. Eventually I'll upgrade when more dollars arrive to a Leopold, maybe something else, but I want at least 14 power. Lightweight, I definitely want that. The dollars just start cranking. I mean, BUIS alone, $200 if you go with Troy. You can go Polymer Inbus, save some money there. It's not going to be low enough to fit under this glass, though. But value is in the eye of the beholder, and I think overall, I will rank this rifle a 10 in the SPR concept from having shot it a lot pretty much over the last two years. It's especially sick now, wearing all the components I'm talking about. Um, the Magpul stuff pretty much remains my favorite AR-15 components. And yeah, it's mismatched color. That's all only colors I could afford at the time. Maybe I'll change colors. I may dirt coat it one of these days. Go multicam. But right now, it's just, yeah, Island of Misfit Toys. I love that coloration there they have on the Troy Alpha rail. Love that rail. So value is up there. I mean, I'm talking both in price and what it... You know, means to us. It's a capable system, though. I mean, we were thwacking with this thing with regularity at 350 yards, albeit we noticed the TOF time of flight of the 5.56. It's like, chink. 300 yards. On that one, we could hear it. You put those little small plates, a 10 inch round plates, 350 yards, 300 yards, you can't hear it. Not out where we were. 
Track record is smoking once it was fixed. That is a nothing fancy SPR. I like the concept. Like I said at the okay, beginning, the have now, a realistic understanding of what the gun can do for you. It can provide slightly increased accuracy. I said slightly, that's right, over a standard 16 inch carbine AR-15. And I've reviewed some great ones, Smith & Wesson, Rock River Arms, probably more to follow. But I'm not getting a weight penalty. And I got an 18 inch barrel with this bad boy. And to me, like that, that is part of the SPR concept real world applications a little bit extra velocity love the rifle have a nice day nothing fancy hit 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 That's a tough shot. Nice. I'm aiming at the same point. The problem is that was zeroed for PMC and we're shooting federal now. Makes sense. Because we ran out of PMC. I don't know if I want to keep wasting it. I'm walking up and down on the plate and nothing's hitting. It's hard to hear. Hit. Hit. All hits except for the first.